My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica. Other people want to make friends? I'm just trying to help you make a little money. My job not just to entertain, to educate, teach. Call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. I, I get it. Today might feel a little underwhelming. But a second-day rally is pretty darn rare in this market. We had so many one-hit wonders that I figured we'd come in today and get whacked right upside the head. Because that's been the pattern, right? You go up, and then the next day you get crushed. Nope, not this time. For most of the day, we actually had a darn good advance. Sure, we gave it up in the last hour, with the Dow only gaining just 27 points. S&P shed 0.07%, NASDAQ ugh, lost 0.58%. But overall, I've got to tell you, this was a victory for the bulls. Why? Okay, yesterday the market rallied because we got softer than expected consumer price index number with inflation flat month over month. That's important. This morning, we rallied again because the producer price index came in lower than expected, too. Two pieces of very good news on the inflation front should prevent the Fed from hitting us, say, with an emergency rate hike this month uh, before they even bother to reconvene in September. And by the way, it lowers the odds for a 0.75% increase when they return. That's worth cheering. But even with peak inflation painting a better picture, this is still a tough market. So it's no surprise that today's run weakened. But ultimately, it did not give up the ghost. Yesterday, we were led by growth of especially tech stocks, which have been very weak of late, the old fang. You remember Facebook, now Meta platforms, Amazon, Alphabet, Netflix, and Alphabet. Apple, Netflix. They all roared. And their compadres fell suit yesterday. But, you know, nothing followed suit today in that group. Today, what led the market was value. We had a solid mini rotation. It moved up a host of economically sensitive stocks that have been laggards because of fears of a Fed-mandated recession. Makes sense. For months, companies that make things suffer from cost inflation. Then they pass the price increases through to you, but often not fast enough to save them from bad quarters. Now the cost of goods for producers was tame last month, but they haven't yet cut the prices they charge the consumer. That means these companies can see what's known as margin expansion. And that's terrific news for profits. Now, I don't want to get too excited about today's action because it did fade uh, because there was also a big difference from yesterday's run. We saw interest rates plummet yesterday, which is always good. That's a relief. We don't want bonds competing with stocks by having higher safer yields. Today, rates soared, in part because we started to get that knee-jerk rally in oil that resident technician Carly Garner predicted for us in last night's show. That, that caused tech to go down. Remember, in this market, oil and tech don't mix, hence the decline in NASDAQ. Instead, value carried us until the late afternoon pullback. What passes for value in this market? I say we go down the list because I think these stocks that I want to talk about, I think they've got real staying power. First, the banks. Now, these, the banks, they've been miserable investments. Why? Because while the banks instantly benefit from rate hikes, they're big losers if the Fed causes a severe recession. And that seemed very likely as long as inflation didn't cool. Because the Fed would have to keep hitting the brakes in order to be able to get the economy to stop growing and cool down. <gasps> Next thing you know, the government all over, all over the banks. And they end up not being allowed to buy back stock or offer bounces to dividends. They get chopped. <laughs> But if inflation cools, then a severe recession is a lot less likely, and the banks are a lot more attractive. They get all the upside of the rate hikes, allowing them to earn 3% of your deposits, while paying you next to nothing, as you know, without the downside of a spike in bad loans. So which, which banks do you buy? All right, I like to be very specific on the show, so you understand I'm not just doing that sector stuff. You ever see people going to say, I can't speak about stocks. Well, it's a stock show, darn it. Anyway, here's what's going on. First thing, we're picking up shares in Wells Fargo for the Chapel Trust because it's a regular bag with a very little of that trading exposure, that kind of whamma jamma stuff that I don't like at all. I think they can raise the dividend. By the way, stock was a 62 in the first week of February of uh, 2018. So you got a little room here. Or you can buy Morgan Stanley, an investment bank and asset gatherer that has some risk. 
But I think you, you can pick it up. Uh, if, if transactions unfreeze, like the way David Faber, my partner in a squawk on the street, said, well, that's going to be great for Morgan Stanley. I put two and two together, listen to him, and I thought about that, and I give it to you. Uh, there's a, it, it's also another benefit of these bullish inflation numbers. They inflate the value of assets that would be troubled if the Fed kept raising rates at such a rapid pace, and Morgan Stanley gets a little piece of that. So it's a natural to like here. What else? All right. I am a fan of the higher-yielding oils like Pioneer Natural or Devon. Hey, we had Devon CEO Rick Moncrief on Squawk in the Street this morning. He told a pretty compelling Don story about a stock with a 10% yield that has a balance of growth and safety. It rallied 7.3% after the interview. We brought this company to the attention of club members of the investing club what, because I had Rick Wong because I've known him for a very long time. He's a great manager. Now, I was very disappointed in the performance of tech stocks today as well as the recent IPO names. These had been on a tear, and after getting killed earlier this year, they all seem to have put in hard-fought bottoms. That said, I think the market will let you uh, into the best ones, and, and you're going to get better prices again. So here's my list of what you should buy if tech goes down again tomorrow. First, one that has really kind of step-by-step, inch-by-inch come back, and that's Amazon. Now, I've been telling you over and over that Amazon wins if we have a slowdown because you want to buy stuff as cheaply as possible. Nothing's cheaper than Amazon. But this is no longer just a retail store. There's also Amazon Web Services, the cloud business, and a big advertising business. By, oh, by the way, the consumer packaged goods companies are throwing their money. They keep talking about two sites, two sites that they're putting a lot of money to. And the sites are Amazon Advertising and Google. They're the winners. Now, I was con- so concerned that this stock might not come in before it goes back up. I think you're going to get a chance to buy Amazon tomorrow. I think it's going to be a terrific opportunity. Then there's AMD. Here's a stock that's been dragged down by competitors who said the business has gotten harder to come by in the data center. But these competitors won't tell you. They won't tell you the reason they're having trouble. It's not because business is weaker or the Internet's slowing. It's because AMD is killing them. AMD has the right chips. Competitors don't. Only in the crazy world of tech would companies blame the environment for slowness and not their competitors for eating their lunch. All right, now I got another one that's obvious. It's called Microsoft. Here's a company that beat the numbers, gave you a firm forecast, and its stock has finally taken a nice breather. Oh, and now I'm going to give you the best for last. This one's kind of a bit of a shocker. Disney. Yes, Disney's non-tech. All right, but if Disney comes in, I think it makes too much sense not to buy it. As I'll discuss later, Wall Street's now treating Disney like a real company with a great theme park business and not just another second-rate streaming video service. In the end, even though we couldn't sustain today's rally, what matters to me is that we were not crushed. We've gotten so used to a big rally then followed by just a nasty, horrible sell-off. And that didn't happen today. I'm not saying that this is the safest market I've ever seen. (laughs) Not at all. I am saying that bear markets don't usually offer you this kind of resident. They go up, you buy in, and then you get your head beaten in. That's not what happened here. If you bought yesterday, you don't feel like an idiot. Thank heavens. This is a different pattern, a moderately reassuring one that will only get better if we keep seeing cooler inflation numbers as we saw today, and I think we will. Here's the bottom line. Inflation is not yet tame, but it's tamer. And tamer inflation can break the old pattern of the market tumbling the day after any rally, making you feel like a sap for getting your hopes up. That didn't happen this time, and you can feel that confidence oozing back into this market. And all I can say is, it's about time. (laughs) Greg in Michigan. Greg! Hey, Jim, a big booyah from Michigan. Love Michigan. One of my faves. What's up? Hey, I want to say thank you for giving us context for these crazy markets and being a voice of reason and common sense. Thank you. I mean, you just made my day because this, the <laughs> show, the club, they are about the context because I've been around and I've seen the context. Let's make some money together. What do we got? Uh, my question is about Kellogg, ticker K. I hold a lot of shares. Should I keep holding them until I get shares in the three new companies or should I sell them before the breakup? Buy, 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 buy. What they're doing at Kellogg is an honor. They have figured out how to make even more money. I think you hold all parts. I think it's terrific. you got a great investment. And by the way, you have one of the few stocks that hit a 52-week high today. Congratulations. And Michigan does rock. A lot of that's University of Michigan because my friend Schefter went there. And he's terrific. All right, let's go to Carmen in Connecticut. Carmen. Hey, Jim. Thank you so much for taking my call. 
My question my is on the. Thank you. My question is on Visa. I've held it for years, but I'd like your opinion on a firm and afterpay, and if I should switch to either of them or stay with Visa. And by the way, no, congratulations no. Yeah. on your new location. It looks great. You're very kind. Connecticut loves this site. Look at this, will you? This isn't lit or I'd show you. That's what they always tell me. Jim, don't walk over there. It's not lit. Like, I care about that. I'm showing it to you anyway. So someone says, ah, it's not lit. I don't care. Anyway, I happen to think that V's is terrific. I think Al Kelly's doing an amazing job. Letter V's doing fine. I'll throw in Ma. That's MasterCard. You are in great hands. Do not do that buy now, pay later, because that's buy now, never pay. And we're not affiliated with that, other than when one time when I lived in my car and I was very much involved with that. So anyway, we're going to stick with what you've got, which is Visa. How about we go to Bo in the, in the Grapefruit and Sunshine State? Bo! Booyah, Jimmy. Thank you for taking my phone call. Uh, I'm calling to talk about Penn National Gaming. You know, with football season right around the corner, uh, it's low P.E. ratio, uh, low cost of customer acquisitions. I would think this would be a great stock heading into football season. What do you think? I like it, but I'm going to do you one better. There's a guy who has suffered in the wilderness, the grapes of whatever, and his name is Jason Robbins, and he's in DraftKings. And we are going with DraftKings, who has left this house, house of and has a whole new address. House of pleasure. Let's go to Dan in California, please. Dan. Dr. Kramer, thank you for taking my call. My pleasure, and thank you for calling me by my official name, doctor. What am I a doctor of, though? You're, you're anyway. a master, sir. Hey, wanted to get wanted to get your thoughts. A on master's Dell Tech- a doctorate. Okay, go ahead. I'm wanted sorry. to get your thoughts on Dell Technologies if you think that would uh, be a good long term investment for shareholders. What you going to bet against Michael Dell? I don't know a single person who's ever made any money betting against Michael Dell. That's not going to happen on this show. No way, no hell. I say buy Dell. All right? Now, inflation is getting tamer, and tamer inflation is what can break the old pattern of the market tumbling. The day after a good day. Hey, what do we have on man tonight? Well, after announcing a deal to sell three of its business units to a private equity firm for nearly $2.5 billion, uh, a, a deal I approved of, I'm digging into the, the details with the CEO of Kirk and Elmer. Then Realty Income, letter O, just declared its 625th consecutive monthly dividend. So could the monthly dividend company be the best way to play the reading space? And don't miss my exclusive whiff. Darling Ingredients! That's the largest publicly traded company. Turns edible byproducts into sustainable feed and food. I'm learning more about how the company's working to better the planet. And by the way, remember all that animal fat that they used to make those delicious fries in with McDonald's? He buys that stuff. I would say bring it back, but you know, I'm trying to stay spelt. Anyway, so stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.